This is YBR with Beam and G Drive, and today we're going to be taking a look at Light Runner Mode, which is a new mode that was added in the version 0.14 update. So for this mode, there is only one location you can choose, but there are nine different tracks. So we're going to be starting off with the first track, which is called Argon Curves. And then for the vehicle choice, there are four vehicles that make the most sense. Those are the Power Glow versions of 200BX, Bolide, Moonhawk, and SBR4. Now you don't need to use these vehicles, Oh, but it looks a lot cooler when you do. So we're going to start off with the SBR4 because by default, that is the vehicle that's selected. And I want to start off by just letting you guys enjoy the environment. It has a nice look to it and it has some unique music that plays in the background as well. So I'll be back once I complete a lap. And that is a lap. Now there are actually a few different audio tracks available to you. So it's not just the one song playing over and over again where it gets really stale really fast. You actually have a good variety of music, which I really did not expect when I first saw this mode. Heck, I didn't even expect there to be music in the first place. Now I did mess up right here last lap. So I'm being extra careful through here that I don't accidentally bump the wall and almost fall off the edge. There we go. That was much better than last time. If I did that last time, I would have had a really good lap. Like everything else I did was pretty solid. Just that one corner right there messed me up. And you'll probably notice while I'm driving through this, there are very few areas that actually require you to slow down. Through a lot of this, you can just go flat out through it. Like right here is one of the two or three areas where you need to slow down. But even then, you're not slowing down that much. This corner has a big bank to it. So we only slow down to like 70, 80 miles per hour. And then we're back out of the corner once again, going over 100 miles per hour, just like that. Although you do lose some speed going through those bank corners just because of gravity pulling on you and all that. And this should be the finish line right here, correct? Yes, so now we can jump off of the track and let it fly. And I know there are only two laps because as you see, I've done this a couple of times earlier. This one I did a lot faster though. Now I'm going to go to free room and let this thing fall. And then you'll be able to see what this map looks like both from above and from below. Although don't look too closely where we just crashed because... From above, it looks like those are cars driving on the road down below, but from here, it's just lights on the ground. No, not much to look at there. What we're going to be looking at are the buildings in the background. And you can really see there are a lot of different shapes to the buildings. They have different designs on them, the way they light up. It's real nice looking. So now let's go ahead and go to the next light runner one. This one is going to be the Kraken Incorporated. And we'll swap out the vehicle for the Moonhawk Power Glow. Before we go driving, I'll give you guys another look at these buildings. So you've seen them from ground level. You've seen them as I drive. And now you get to see what they look like from track level. And this is really where they look best because you can see the cars down there. They actually look like cars. And again, you can see the good variety of buildings. And you can see how the track really loops around this time. This track actually looks a lot more difficult than the one I did last time. I mean, look at the stuff up there. We got loops and stuff. I kind of wish I had a faster car, but hopefully the Moonhawk will be okay. And right here, you can see the variety of buildings really well. You'll notice some buildings do repeat, but in this environment, it kind of just works. Now, back to focusing on driving. We got that countdown. Three, two, one, and go. And we actually got some wheel spin with this one. See, I'm a little bit used to that SBR4, man. All wheel drive, your floor, it goes. Listen, you got to be a little bit more careful when you first start going. But really, it didn't cause any issues. Like, you could have spun out right there like a complete idiot if you wanted to. I didn't. I remained in control mostly. And this is steep. Come on, Moonhawk. Okay, it got it. I was worried over nothing. That actually wasn't that hard. It's just when you see the corner get that steep, you get nervous. Same right here. I get nervous. But we're going about 100 miles per hour entering that corner. So that's more than enough speed for us to get through it. And it looks like we have a loop coming up. So hopefully we're going fast enough for that. We want to swap the camera to this one so we can see what we're doing as we get inverted. And we're good. So back to the regular camera. Ooh, 
Oh, that's actually kind of neat. I'll have to show you guys that later on, but when you're inside of the car, the music changes up a bit like it's actually coming from the speakers of the car. That's cool, and that's bad. The Moonhawk is not fast enough to do that, I don't think. Unless you have basically a perfect run, you're not going to have enough speed to do that because you're going upside down a little bit. And at that point, gravity just takes over and there's nothing you can do about it. So here's what the damage looks like. And I just noticed there's a design on the hood. So taking a quick look at that, and that's pretty cool. I really like how it has the same blue as the stripes on the car. But I'm going to go with something faster to make this easier on myself. So we're going to go with the bull ride, which should be much faster. And before we drive this time, let's listen to the difference in music between outside the car and inside the car. Now let's get our mind on the race. This time we're gonna have a nice smooth launch because with this car, you have to actually try to not launch the car smoothly because right there, all I did was floor it and it looked nice and clean. But if you clutched in and just dropped the clutch at 9,000 RPM, well then you could get some wheel spin and slide all over the place if you really, really wanted to. So going through this section right here, we do feel a bit faster, maybe about 10 miles per hour faster or so. Or maybe it's just the extra downforce from all the aerodynamic bits on this car make it feel like it's more grip to the road i don't know but it feels a lot more stable going through that area so right now i feel pretty confident in the bowl line we gotta do the loop and if we could do it with the moonhawk we could do it with the bowl line that just makes sense to me that was pretty easy and now for the moment of truth we gotta get a good camera angle and oh changing camera angles almost messed me up I almost just kind of popped off of that thing but it can make it even with that small mistake so this thing is definitely doing better than the Moonhawk did easily. We just got to make sure we have zero driver air so we can actually complete a lap of this place. And the funny thing is, right as I say that, I kind of start to get squirrely and I'm still kind of like sliding all over the place. Just slow it down for a sec. Get it under control. Okay, maybe slowing it down is not the best strategy. I don't know. No, it's, it's definitely a good strategy. I think you need to slow down on those transitions. Like when you're going from a straight to an angled bank. Slow it down just a little bit to make sure your wheels don't accidentally break traction if you get popped in the air a little bit. Oh, stop sliding. Stop sliding. Woo! I don't know why, but that looked really, really unnatural. Like, it looked like a car just whipped itself right to the right direction, and then it kept going. I guess the banked corner really confuses the eye sometimes. Slowing it down just a little bit here because it looks like this could be steep. And oh, that is a flip. This is a really weird looking flip, too. And it looks funny driving in the checkpoint like that. So it looks like we're flattening out, so we'll go back to the- Oh, no! We don't need to change camera angles yet! We need to stay in this camera to do this final flip. Never mind, there's another one. Alright, I'm just gonna assume there's infinite flips until I see otherwise. Alright, that looks level. So we're back to the good camera angle. And we've done a lap. But this lap, we're coming at it a lot faster, so I gotta make sure I keep that in mind. For, like, the places where I didn't have to slow down last time, I might need to slow down a little bit. Although, on that corner, it didn't feel like there was that big of a difference in speed. It might have only been like a mile per hour or two. And one thing I just noticed is kind of funny. The brakes really cool down on this area because we're using them so little. Like, they started at like 500 degrees Fahrenheit. Now they're dropping down to like 150 degrees Fahrenheit. And they just keep getting cooler and cooler. Eventually, the brakes are just going to be at the ambient temperature the way things are going. I messed this up last time. Let's do it cleanly this time. Stay in the middle of the road. There we go. And that's kind of interesting. You saw the car actually bottomed out right in the middle of that corner. So like if I could get just to that point with the Moonhawk, it would have been fine. But it falls off like a half second before you reach right there. So I know I slowed down right here. I don't know if I actually needed to, but better safe than sorry. We got to duplicate what we did last time, which includes almost going off the edge apparently. I did not want to get that close to the edge. I wanted to stay in the middle like I'm doing right here. And then on this corner, I don't need to slow it down because it went kind of smooth last time except for the part where I slid out of control. But that was later on. That was like right up here. So now I'm going a little bit faster and this time we didn't slide out of control. All right. So you just got to figure out which corners do I need to slow down on? Which ones do I not need to? Or do I need to slow down on any of them? I really don't know. But like right here, it looks so tight. I feel like I got to slow down just a little bit. I went to the camera angle a little early. That's okay as long as I don't go off the edge from doing that. 
And again, we drive into the top of the checkpoint. You know, I wonder if you could actually miss a checkpoint the way these are set up. Like, if you tried hard enough, could you be right on the edge of the road where you don't fall off, but you miss a checkpoint? That's something I kind of want to try, but not right now, because we're almost done. Assuming this one is also two laps like the last one, this will be the finish, because I haven't actually completed this one before. Please be the finish, because I'm flying, and I'm actually leaving at this camera angle. So that is the finish. We're going to go to free roam now, so we can watch the car fly into the buildings from a hopefully cool camera angle or a terrible camera angle like it was kind of neat and dramatic but it was like movie angles where you can't exactly tell what's going on you just have an idea like the car crashed two times so let's do that again this time we're not going to go as fast but we're going to still do the same kind of crash where we crash two times so one time into a building and then one time into the road down below and once again we're actually going to hit where the cars are on the road i don't know how i keep managing to do that but that's two times in a row the last time i actually don't know where i hit because the camera angle was so bad so now we go to the next stage which is called krypton raceway and we'll go ahead and give the moonhawk one more try here and hopefully it doesn't fall off the edge it's really not up to me though it's up to the track if the track has any crazy inversions yeah this car's not going to work so well if it's more flat we should have no problems using this car the first corner right here looks a little tight so how about we have some fun with it we're gonna drift the corner oh come on drift it drift it that was okay we went a little bit slower in the end than i wanted to but i really wasn't sure how tight the corner was gonna be so i kind of had to adjust mid corner now i got a nice little straightaway here that gets us in the air just a bit if we had a faster car we'd have been in the air a lot more and you know what sounds fun to do as long as there's no inversions or anything where we have to go fast we're gonna try to like slide around every corner just for fun just like right there I wasn't going super fast or anything, but it looked pretty cool as I went around the corner. And that's going to be my goal here because this isn't the kind of car I like to try to drive fast, but it is a good car for trying to slide all over the place. I do wish this mode had a counter for how many checkpoints you've gone through per lap by default. I'm probably able to add one though, so I might look into doing that for the next video. But for this one, we've already done half of the video without it, so I'm not going to bother adding it. Ooh, S corner. Can I drift both ways? Maybe it's actually really, really tight. There's number one and number two, close enough. Like bumping the rear like that, that's okay. It's not gonna damage the car, I don't think. It's just gonna kind of bounce it off like you saw right there and we keep going at, uh, I would say full speed, but we're going so slow anyways. We're going at whatever speed I feel like. Like I could probably get a good 30 seconds off of this time using the same car if I was actually trying to go around the corners fast. But just the way this car drives, it likes to slide easy, so I encourage it to slide around the corners. And no, oh, no, I messed this one up again. I, I did it worse than last time. Oh, that that was really worse. I literally just about drove right off the edge of that for no good reason. There's a little bit better. Well, you know, I'm having some good slides here and there, but then I'll, I'll ruin it. Like, I'll just keep trying to push too hard for it, and then we hit the corner or something. Just got to keep it under control and don't overextend. It's like right here. Know what you can do. Just like this. Oh, no, I overextended a little bit, but not nearly as bad as before. That was actually okay. I got worried that I was going to uh, spin out just a little bit right there, though. Got a real bad entry angle on this one. I just don't want to fall off the edge. Oh, yeah. If I tried to actually slide that around, falling off the edge would have been a huge possibility there. So we're at one minute and it took us one minute, 30 seconds last lap. So we should be getting near the end soon. Here's the S corner again. I'm going to mess this up. I just know it. I'm going to try my best, but it's going to go wrong. I'm going to do it too slow or something. All right, that's good. Now, can I get it the other way? <laughs> no, not really. Like <laughs> that was really slow. I could have probably cut off three seconds just from that one corner. Maybe even five. I don't know. It felt like it took forever to get through that thing. Is that the final checkpoint? No, I think that one up there is the final checkpoint. We're done. Yeah, I'm actually like six seconds slower than last time. That's great. Not like it matters. I wasn't trying for time. It's just funny. Anyways, off we go. Don't care about you. Get a little bit of slow-mo into this. Well, it's actually kind of cool the way that it has like a piece on the wheel that glows. And I'll speed this up just a bit till we get to the impact. There's the impact. It's kind of interesting what it looks like when the car crashes into a big solid black object like that. It looks like it crashes into nothing at all almost and the car just gets smushed. So there is the final state of the car. Oh, 
it's now on fire too as well <laughs> okay then uh, anyways let's go ahead and go to the next light runner one this one is called lights car or light scar not sure which and for this we'll use the 200bx the moonhawk had that extra bird on it so does the 200bx have anything extra Ooh, look at that hood it has a lot on the hood and lights uh it does have something on the roof though i'm not exactly sure what it is like a triangle looking shape if it's an icon for something i'm not sure what the icon is for i don't think it's like an abishu icon or anything like that anyways we're now driving so my focus should move on to watching the car go around these corners and well actually i'm not just watching the car go around these corners i'm making it go around these corners and first corner nice and easy a big bank corner and it almost looks like that's all we're going to be doing is big bank corners right on top of each other i can't quite tell for certain but i'm really thinking that might be what this is so now we're going to the green which is going to be right above the blue and then we go to the red which was right above the green right yeah whoa that's not how you want to do it. That was way too high. Now I'm too low. I'm all over the place. It's like, I overcompensate. I say, okay, we went too high. This time we're going to go a little bit lower. Now we're too low. So what's at the end of this is my question. Is it going to be just a normal racetrack? Or is it going to be like something cool at the top of this thing? I really don't know. And also, it feels like you don't really need to slow down that much. Like, I let up on the gas just a little bit here and there. I don't think I need to hit the brakes, though. We can just keep flooring it most of the time with just a small led up here and there like right there i didn't slow down at all i might have lost a little bit of speed because the car slid a little bit but that's different than intentionally slowing down as far as i'm concerned and that's one lap down one lap left so the first lap took one minute and 12 seconds we're actually beating that time by five seconds so we could probably do the next lap in a 105 if i was really perfect on it I'm not gonna worry about that i just want to make sure i don't make any mistakes and again, this is another one of those races where the brakes don't get used much, so they just get nice and cool. The last one, we were using the brakes a lot, because I was using them to slide all over the place. So they got used up, and they were nice and hot. Here, though, brakes are at 130 degrees. And I'm actually kind of curious, the way the brakes cool down. If they all start at the same temperature, and I didn't use the brakes at all, do they cool down at different rates in the front and rear? Because, you know, in a real car, the airflow that gets to the rear brakes and the front brakes is going to be a little different. So one pair of brakes will cool off faster than the other. There's another good question. Do sports cars in this game, do they have more air going to the brakes so they cool off faster compared to like an SUV? Maybe we'll look into that sometime in the future. But right now we have one more checkpoint left. So we're going to make this dramatic. We're going to fly across it. Oh, wait. No, what? Oh, no. It was three laps. That's what I get for just assuming it was going to be two laps like the others, I guess. Ain't no way I'm getting up there, so my only option here is to uh, reset the car, but I want to see. How many laps was this? It was... Okay, it's three laps. I'm making sure I don't have to do four or something like that. So, three laps, and I'll tell you what. This is going to be the last one of the light runners I do in this video. I'll be doing another video where I do the other half of them, hopefully, in just a single video, unless they're really long and they need to be split up for some reason. Like, you know, oh, these ones are five laps now. Well, then shoot. It's got to be two separate videos plus this one. Uh, anyways, though, this is going to be the last run I do. And since you're going to have to watch the same thing twice, I'll do something a little bit interesting on the final lap. So stick around for that final lap and it might or might not work out. I have no idea. I just thought it might be fun to try out. Whoa, I did it again. That corner right there, it gets me somehow. Like that's I can't remember if I did it on the second lap of the last run but both of my first laps i almost flew off of that part you know i really do like bank corners though because it's just so fun being able to fly through a corner this tight at 120 130 miles per hour if it didn't have a bank to it you'd be slowing down at probably like 80 miles per hour to go through that thing no way you'd be going that fast all right the green ones you gotta watch out for those but not this green one it's the other green one I'm confusing myself here. So one lap down. I think that was a little bit faster than the first lap I did last time. So we're improving. Don't think I could get a sub one minute lap with this car though. Maybe if I had the SBR4, then I could get a sub one minute lap. With this one though, I think the best I'm going to get would be like a 103. And that'd be like a really nice run. Probably not perfect. Perfect might be able to get you under one minute. But just having a real nice run would be like a 103. Because for me, I'm not exactly 100% sure how to approach corners that are banked this high 
to go through them as fast as possible. Like, I feel like there's definitely time left on the table for me, but I'm going through them fast enough. Because if I was going through them slow, we wouldn't be able to go through those bent corners. We would just fall off because they're so steep. You have to be going a certain speed just to be able to go through this track. You know, that's kind of the interesting thing, actually. You have to go over a certain speed, otherwise you'll crash. Like, regular racetracks, you can slow down and be safe. For this one, you slow down, well, that's that's a safety hazard. So anyways, what are we doing for the last lap? This. We're going to change the colors with the road. I don't know, I just thought it'd be funny to do. So now the car is blue, and then when we get to the next one, it's going to be green and then red. And I think it goes back to green and then blue. I wasn't paying that much attention, to be honest, to the colors up until right now. I was just mostly focused on doing the good driving. So there is the green. So you say, car, become green. And it just does it. Just like that, the car is green. And it's super easy to do because BMG now has the voice activated options to change the color of the car as long as you use the glowing ones. So you say, car, become red. And just like that, you have a red car now. And just being honest with you guys, I know you can tell exactly what I'm doing because you can see when I freeze physics. I'm leaving that in though because everything looks a little bit smoother when you do that. If you remove that, there's just a big jitter because that thing is there while the car is still moving. It's one of those weird things you don't really notice, but right there, you'll see the car is moving, but the freeze physics thing is still on the screen just for a second. So that's just something I had to do when I was changing the colors. Like right here, blue, you see it just for a second. Not for long, just a second. Now here is the fun part though. We're gonna change colors a lot. Go green. And then, can we get to the orange and red? Nope, we can go to the blue. And then the orange. And then the ground. That was the best part right there. That's a good finish for this video. So until next time, this is YBR. I'll know if you like or dislike this video, so do the right thing, and I'll see you next time.